Hello, my name is Reggie Fizeme, head of Nintendo of America, and what you're all been waiting for is finally here, the Nintendo Switch. At a low price of 300 US dollars, we give you the choice to switch the way you play, with the innovative Joy-Con controllers which slide off for maximum enjoyment. It's featuring games such as Zelda, the innovative 1-2 Switch showing off all the system's features, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe fixes the battle mode, and everyone's favorite, Skyrim. This is the Joy-Con, the revolutionary slide-on controller that will forever switch the way you play, no pun intended. By giving you the freedom to turn it horizontally, vertically, arm spread out, however you want to play. Bringing its innovative docking feature to the table, the Nintendo Switch acts as your home console such as your PS4 or your Xbox One along with the portability of a system such as your Nintendo 3DS. It is innovative and it will switch the industry. Some gamers wonder why are we charging so much for what seems just like a normal controller. Sure, for $70, you, it may seem just like an Xbox One controller, but the features lie on the inside, such as innovative rumble and rubber grips built into the controller, so no need for squid grip. But a lot of people are also upset about the Joy-Cons, our innovative controllers, being $80. But if you think about it, many games just use one Joy-Con, so you're getting two for a price of one, 40 each, which I think is a steal. Here at Nintendo, we think you only need the essentials for your consoles, such as cords, controller, system, etc., just to get you started. But anything else on top of that, controllers, a D-pad, controller for your little brother when you want to play ARMS, that's all, that's all on you. Many people dislike the removal of the D-pad from the Nintendo Switch, but we feel you can play Super Mario Brothers or any platforming game just as well once you become accustomed with what may at first seem like a hindering control scheme with buttons. Many people consider the lack of a D-pad to be like playing Call of Duty Black Ops on your Nintendo DS, our beloved system, with only face buttons. It seems unnatural first, but you'll get used to it. A lot of people dislike that we only have one first party game at launch, but really all you're going to be buying the system for is Zelda anyway. Along with the fact that if you wait a month or two, you're going to get the only other two games you want, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and ARMS. We have countered our lack of first-party titles with quality third-party developers making their own games at their own will, such as Activision with, what you guessed it, Call of Duty, Bethesda with The Elder Scrolls and Fallout, Capcom with Dead Rising, Mega Man, and Street Fighter, from Software with uh, everyone's favorite easy game, Dark Souls, not. EA with Battlefield, Sega with Sonic, Telltale with many choice-based games, Platinum with Bayonetta, and all kinds of others, along with many tools to make games. So it's a win-win for everyone. A lot of people have asked, why is the Switch having trouble to run its own game, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, at a steady 30 frames per second? which most gamers find all right, but a lot critique as false lag. What happens is, due to the low refresh rate, a lot of people who understand games a little more than others decide that it has lag. But the Switch is an innovative console, but it's not what most people would assume a powerhouse. Saying so means, yes, it can run this game, this massive world, but it will come at a price. We have heard your response to our lack of launch titles, but we feel that while it may be only four games, we feel it's not plagued with shovelware, which is a term used by the community to state a game that is rushed to the market just for a quick buck, such as Shrek Extra Large, which was in fact a launch title for the original Xbox. This came out alongside the first Halo, no joke. People always ask us why we didn't, and out of our considerably sparse lineup of Nintendo Switch games, why we didn't put in 
the interesting to say the least one two switch when it could have demonstrated the system's many features well other companies have packed in games with little to no success such as sony packing in destiny which a lot of people disliked and a lot of people liked it's very mixed a lot of people would rather die than play it i liked it but a majority considered this game garbage we with our other best-selling system, the Nintendo 64, had two games at launch. And one of them being Mario 64, the best-selling game on the system. Do we pack that in? No. So point invalid. And also, Super Smash Bros. Melee wasn't packed in with the system at launch, but we packed it in for a limited time, for about a month, and we sold more GameCubes than ever. But then afterwards, once we discontinued the bundle, people bought just as many GameCubes, if not more. So point, also invalid. Be able to play your console quality games in public with the most elegant of grace is with your many peripherals, such as your gaming headset, your battery bank, your controller, your extra controller. You'll look like a boss. <laughs> You'll look like such a boss. Like me. Before you go on your 12 hour Vegas road trip with your wonderful eye cup full of your favorite substance, preferably non alcoholic, is it worth the three hour battery life on your Switch? Because before long, halfway through the road trip of playing Zelda, you are gonna run out of battery and you're gonna react like this. All in all, we feel for the low, low price of $300, which we think is reasonable most people dislike and say we should have done it 250 but it's our business we do it the way we want so for 300 dollars, you get everything you want and you'll ever need for our upcoming and possibly final console enjoy now that you've decided on your all in all well spent purchase let's pre-order one of these babies just show you how easy it is or not